And good evening to you. I'm Sean Green with tonight's edition of Sports Night, beginning with some sad news. Former Barbados Brigade keeper batsman Livingston Puckering died today following a long battle with cancer. Puckering played 18 first-class matches between 1989 and 1996, scoring 610 runs, including three half centuries, at an average of 21.78. He took 19 catches and brought up one stumping. Puckering also turned out in 14 list A 50 over matches, scoring 324 runs at an average of 36. Puckering also played in the regional under 19 championship, captain in the champion Barbados under 19 team in the, in the 19, in 1988 tournament. In local domestic competitions, he skippered Spartan to a double crown season. This was back in 1990, winning the first division and the Barbados Fire Cup one day titles. Now, after retiring from the game, Puckering also rose to become manager of the Barbados under 19 team. BCA President Conde Riley paid tribute to Puckering. It was with a sense of sadness when we learned of Livy Puckering's passing this morning. Two years ago, we realized that he wasn't doing too well. Um, he was appointed manager of the Barbados under-19 team. And he told us that, you know, due to his health, he wanted to withdraw. Um, so we knew about two years ago of his illness and we certainly reached out to him at that time and since then. Livy was a very good youth cricketer and he also represented Barbados at the senior level as a keeper batsman. He, at the end of his playing days, he came on board working with our youth as a coach and as a manager on behalf of, and on behalf of the Barbados Cricket Association and certainly myself. I want to extend sincere, sincere condolences to his family. Well, Puckering is survived by his mother, Elaine Spooner, and four siblings, including Philip Spooner of West Indies Cricket, Rodney, Juliet, and Pat. He was 49. In more cricket news, right arm fast bowler Sherman Lewis will replace Alzari Joseph in the 15-man squad for the Test Tour of India, which starts on October 4th in Rakhot. In the last in last week, Joseph underwent uh, two fitness assessment procedures, and the uh, Cricket West Indies medical panel has recommended that he be allowed to continue his rehabilitation to full fitness for international competitions. He suffered a stress fracture that was last November and has since been in intense programs to get him back to full strength. Now, since then, he has also played in the international home series against Bangladesh and the recently concluded Caribbean Premier League. Joseph will continue his rehabilitation program under the monitoring of medical officials at the High Performance Center at the Coolidge Ground in Antigua. In the meantime, some members of the test squad are already in Dubai and have begun training sessions at the ICC Academy as they continue their preparations for the first test in India. Oh, when these women um, are really looking to even up their Sandals International Home Series, the home series against the South Africans. Of course, when that match will continue at Kenton Oval uh, tomorrow in the second ICC Women's Championship One Day International, that's at Kenton Oval. Now, when these women, they trail 1-0 in the three-match series following a 40-run de defeat in the first ODI. That was on Sunday at the same venue. Now, veteran Wendy's women's all-spinner Anissa Mohammed says it's go time, seeing it's only th a three-match series. Um, well, we're looking to build on, on the last game, looking back at the last game, we know where we went wrong. We played majority of the game to our strengths. We've had a lot of good moments in the game. Unfortunately, we weren't able to capitalize in the second half and win that game. But we've had a, a day to reflect and recharge and hopefully tomorrow we would be able to execute. Well, the three ODIs of the Sandal series form part of the third round of the ICC Women's Championship. Now, both the Wendy's and South African women are looking to climb out of the bottom half of the points table, where they are tied on six points. The Wendy's women are six on a superior net run rate of uh, minus 0 0.644, while the South African women are seventh with an NRR of minus 0 0.0. 
0.864. Now, Horse New Zealand and the three other uh, top teams from the championship will gain direct qualification for the 2021 ICC Women's World Cup. The remaining four sides will get a second chance through the ICC Women's World Cup qualifier event in which they will be joined by six teams from four regions, Africa, Asia, East Asia Pacific and Europe. In news of volleyball, it was a victorious night for the Chargers men along with uh, Pan American Life Insurance Warren's women as the Goddard Enterprises Limited Senior Knockout Volleyball Competition continued at the Worldly Gym. Here is CBC's Akim Klinkett with a report. Chargers closest to the screen were leading this game two sets to nil. So we pick it up in the third set as the setter comes good with a nice box set for Tonya Joseph to fire for the point. But Warren's got on the scorecard in this set as they respond with the big block on the right side. Warren's fighting for this point, solid defense answering every question Chargers asked of them as they would show their fight in this game taking the third set 25-20. In the fourth, Warren's continue their charge, outside set finds Antasia Mason who put some fire on her spike to collect the point. Warren's using the full book of plays, short set this time, Anicia Wood gets up, comes down with force, lands in the backcourt for the point. But Chargers were looking to close out the game, showing determination for the save. Warren's losing slight focus, relinquishing the point with the mistake. But Warren's had other ideas. Rihanna nails off the short set, spike with might, as Warren's tied up the game at two sets apiece, winning the fourth, 25-22. In the fifth, it was a full-on battle for the game. Each team throwing their best shots, but Chargers would take this point as the ball rolls off the net into Warren's side of the court. But fortune favors the brave. Warren's completing the comeback with the block, taking the fifth, 15-13, at the game, three sets to two. To the men's division now, where Progressive won the first set, but Chargers were looking to bring it back on level terms. Second set action as Johan Branford finds the open court on the right side for Chargers. But Progressive responded in the same manner. Rico Braffitt on the right side produces some force with the spike. Too much for the Chargers libero. But Progressive would double their lead, win the second, 25-23, as Chioki Holder with the light touch gets it over the blockers for the point. In the third, Chargers came out with energy. Outside set for Nicholas Harris, who connects perfectly, causing some damage in Progressive side of the court. Blood in their eyes, Chargers taking full control of the third, short set this time for Jeremy Belgrave, who finds some space and exploits it. Chargers then come good on defense, the rejection as they took the third, 25-23. Chargers also took the fourth, so we're locked at 2-2 in the fifth set as Fabian Cox leaps and produces the dink for Progressive. But Chargers had the momentum with them and weren't going to allow it to dip. Defense locked tight for the block on Braffitt. Then they transfer that energy to offense as Ashan Jordan goes cross court with the spike to allow Chargers to collect the double win of the night, taking the fifth, 15-11 as a game. Three sets to two. Akeem Klinkit, CBC Sports. In other fixtures last night in the women's division, Club United easily defeated Burger King Clapton Toners three straight, while it took Omega XL Deacons the full slate of sets to get over the defending champions UWA Blackbirds winning 3-2. to two. Meanwhile, in the men's division, both uh, games took five sets to decide the victors. Now, all stars beat Foundation United after being up 2 0, but having to hold on for the 3 2 decision. And Deacons narrowly got home over Cormier, having been down twice before winning in five. Switching sports now, the 39th Barbados Workers Union annual netball tournament recently got going at the netball stadium after the opening ceremony. It was there that the Minister of Sports, the Honorable John King, in wishing the competitors a successful tournament, reassured them that government has not forgotten them in its future plans for a stadium upgrade. Let your individual and collective performances be worthy of being emulated by others, both in netball and in other sporting disciplines. I wish to commend all of you and wish you a successful competition. My very best wishes to all teams, officials, organizers, and supporters of netball who are participating in this tournament. And out of script, but just to let you know, that in the plans for the redevelopment of the National Stadium, you will get an indoor netball stadium. 
Well, our president of the BWU, Senator Tony Moore, was also one of the main speakers at the opening ceremony. One of the things that we pause ever so often during this opening ceremony to remind you of is our commitment to sports, to youth, and of course, to employment. And indeed, it is that commitment that sees us recognizing sports and this netball competition as very critical to what we deliver as as a union we continue to strive to deliver for all meanwhile president of the barbados netball association nisha craigwell encouraged the young netballers to put their best foot forward in order to maximize their opportunity to go much further in the sport I encourage all participants to grasp the opportunity to take part with both hands, as it is a part of the learning curve for netball in Barbados. Our selectors are normally present to ensure that we do not miss out on an opportunity to hone talent. Who knows, just maybe the next up and coming Bayesian gem could be amongst us this evening. 